So you can keep the aluminium theme going and uh, talk in a minute also about iron ore with prices surging with that particular commodity, but get the views of IRC non-executive chairman uh, Jay Hamro, who's with me now, about aluminium. Now, you bought this asset in the UK from Rio Tinto, I think about six, seven months ago, wasn't it, or thereabouts, and, and it makes you the biggest aluminium producer in the United Kingdom. What do you see with what... Martin was talking about there is the confidence that Rio has got at the moment with being in aluminium and how it's supported by beer cans or the shift of beer cans uh, in China. So uh, I, I, a year ago, actually, we, the GFG Alliance and, and Liberty, bought uh, Rio's last remaining assets in the UK. So both an aluminium producer and an energy producer, and we use that energy to make the aluminium. The hydroelectric station. Exactly. So we, we acquired that asset because we believe in aluminium. And... Uh, there is a lot of debate in the media at the moment about uh, driverless cars, about electric vehicles versus petrol or diesel. The reality is that whatever engine you have at the front and whatever you have driving the car, it will still be made from steel or aluminium in terms of the, the main structural integrity of the car. So we have to be key producers of those metals. There's, everyone focuses on lithium and cobalt for the batteries, but the main metals in the car are still steel and aluminium. It's just those two are let's say, a little bit uh, rarer than uh, aluminium. I True. think bauxite is the most uh, abundant uh, ore in the world, is it? Iron ore, actually. Iron, uh, is it iron ore? Yeah. Uh, OK, let's talk about iron ore, then. Huge demand at the moment. A lot of predictions that the prices are going to be going, well, higher for longer. Well, what's your view on this? So, yes, we have seen a pickup in the iron ore price. It is a much stronger scenario than, than it was. I think the most interesting thing to note about the iron ore price is actually the premium that the high-grade producers are getting at the moment. So speaking with my IRC hat on, we as a producer of very high-grade 65% material should be getting a very uh, consistent and long-term premium for that. It's almost 50% higher, the difference between 62 and 65% at the moment. So it's a great place to be. The, the lower grades of iron ore are, are more challenging, but you have seen the price now tick up to over $70 a tonne today. So it, it's in a good place. Well, this brings us on to the crackdown that we're having on uh, pollution in China. That probably doesn't affect you that much with your minds being uh, in Russia. Uh, but tell me about you know, this, all this playing out. How significant do these steel curbs, let's say, in China that we're witnessing affect your business? So we uh, have not seen any fall off in demand for our product. Uh, when, when IRC first ramped up to uh, production at the KNS mine, we were in a strong place because we were producing this high-grade product. People will always need that. Uh, in terms of the fundamental balance of demand and supply, that's, that's met by the price going up. And we are beneficiaries of that. We haven't seen any of the, of the fall off from uh, capacity cuts. There are people making their steel plants more efficient. And that's partly what drives the need for the higher grade material. But uh, no, no cuts in, in demand for us. You mentioned KNS. Uh, are you at full strength? I think that you're nearly at full strength. Like the last so, we were talking. very proud to have uh, beat our 80% capacity recently, and we'll be wrapping up to 100% shortly. So, what about uh, Kronak as well? You, you were, even last time we were talking, thinking about reopening that. Is that uh, progress? Kronak remains a very exciting option, and with the price where it is at the moment, it's an option that we spend more and more time considering. But the reality is, when we've got KNS producing 3 million tons a year, and uh, on, on today's Arnold price, producing a very fat margin, we have a very exciting future from that. So we're, we're kept very busy in, in terms of making sure that operates well. Let's talk about some of your other companies. Let's talk about Arium. You bought this one last, not the last time we talked, but I think the time before you were just in the process of buying it. Uh, that's gone through. Now, Arium is, again, a company which should be doing well. Why? What do you think? You think you can, how you can make this work and make this company profitable when previous management couldn't? So, Arium uh, is a company that we in the GFT Alliance acquired in August of this year. And Arium effectively is two businesses. The, the first business is a very profitable business that we now call Liberty One Steel. So, Liberty One Steel is one of the biggest collectors of steel scrap and recyclers of steel scrap in Australia. 
And so we've taken that business, which was already profitable, and we have added on the purchase of an energy business. So it's, it's a very energy intensive user to recycle the steel. We acquired a majority interest in a business called Cymex Zen Energy. Cymex Zen Energy will supply us with a very efficient source of renewable low cost power and make that business work even better. The other side of what was the Arian business is uh, at a site called Wyala in, in South Australia. Wyala is a vertically integrated mining, blast furnace, and port operation that uh, is not as big as the other iron ore mines in Australia. And it suffers from a diseconomy of scale in that respect. What sort of quality is it? So uh, in terms of the steel product, it's, it's a standard steel slab. In terms of the iron ore that we produce, we produce both magnetite and hematite. So we tend to use that magnetite uh, iron ore in the blast furnace and export the hematite through our own port. And it's very rare in today's uh, commodity world to have that full integration of mining, blast furnace and port operation. And it, in terms of answering your initial question as to why we think we can make it work, that's vital to it. So owning that uh, supply chain from mining through to production through to delivering to the customer. So we will yes, use... Yes, you're vertically integrated. We're vertically integrated. We will use uh, the Liberty House Group's uh, global network of uh, steel mills and trading business to take a lot of the, the material that Wyala produces and not just consume it in Australia, but also look to have a, a more international market. Uh, Jay, looking across IRC, looking at GFG, etc. How do these different iron ore grades for you pan out with regard to these curbs that we talked about? You've already said the higher iron ore, a higher quality iron ore will not be affected in effect. What about the lower ones? So I think when you look at the lower grade of iron ore, it has a number of challenges. One, in terms of uh, a, a greening of the steel process in China, there is more of a demand for a higher grade product. Two, it is a less liquid product. So a lot of the traders who own that uh, struggle to hold it because you, you can get use it uh, for less collateral. In five seconds, will iron ore prices be over 100 soon? The I think there's grade. a very good chance that they could be over for the 65% material yeah. over 100 this week. I mean, this is an exciting time. We, we're already seeing 65% material plus 90. Uh, everyone talks about 62, which is in the 70s at the moment. But let's let's talk about the 65. Good times.